Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. Today we're going to be talking about the Grand Canyon. That's right. right. Well, this is and a, even rafting down the Grand Canyon. Which is a, a little bit good topic for you because you've actually done this. I've actually done that. Yeah. I was with, uh, with ICR, the Institute for Creation Research, in the mid-90s, right. rafting for five days down the Colorado River through Grand Canyon, looking at the rocks there and understanding how they came to be laid down in a global flood and not over millions of years. Right, because the Grand Canyon is kind of like an iconic, well, it's used by evolutionists uh, as an, this iconic uh, geological feature that must have occurred over millions of years yes. to carve this out yes. and, and, and so on. So that must have been a neat uh, In adventure. reality, it's kind of a monument to the flood. Right. It's a, it's a memorial of something that happened in the past that's not yeah. going on today. Because you can easily see all these layers, and, and, and they, they pose some real challenges for, for the evolutionary uh, paradigm. So they do. Anyway, that's what this article's about. Uh, it's from uh, Andrew Snelling. It's called Grand Canyon, A Devastating Failure for Long-Age Geology. Oh. And, uh, yeah. and if you want to follow along with it, uh, if you look it up on the, on the website, so there's some, some diagrams that kind of show you some of the layers and, and some of the things we're going to be talking about here. But uh, right. anyway. Rafting through Grand Canyon, northern Arizona, is a most exhilarating and enjoyable experience. Deep below the rim, the crystalline basement rocks tower above the turbulent Colorado River. Official publications say that these rocks are more than a billion years old, but when the methods used to date them are carefully examined, a totally different story is discovered. Clearly visible in the walls of the inner gorge are spectacular light-colored rocks, such as the pink granites, which stand out starkly against the darker metamorphic rocks. The latter are former sedimentary and volcanic layers that have been met, uh, transformed, metamorphosed, by heat and pressure during intense geological upheavals in the past. Amongst these volcanic layers are distinctive dark-colored rocks called amphibolites. Is that, did I say that correctly? I think it's pretty close. Okay. These were once flows of basalt lava up to tens of meters thick. Some outcrops reveal round pillow structures showing that the basalt lavas erupted underwater. How old are the rocks? Well, based on radiometric dating, long-age geologists say that the basalt lavas erupted one, uh, 1,745 million years ago and were metamorphosed some 1,700 million years ago. Many people, including many uh, scientists, accept these dates as absolute truth. They believe that when different radio dating methods are used on the same rocks, they will all yield the same age. But the quest to test this belief by sampling rocks from deep within Grand Canyon have found it not to be true. Of course, they probably talked about a lot of this stuff when you're on your, your trip. Yes, yeah, and I get what what he's getting at here is yep. if you measure it using different measuring techniques, you should get the same age. If obviously you should get the same age, right? That's like measuring. If we wanted to measure the size of this magazine, and we had a metal ruler and a wooden ruler and a plastic ruler, right? The magazine size is not changing, and all three rulers should give us exactly the same right. measurements for you know, the size of this paper. There's, uh, you know, uh, rubidium, strontium, uh, potassium, argon. They, the different types of different this. That's your analogy of the different rulers. Yes. They should all give us the same the same measurement, right? Okay, uh, dating. Uh, amphibolite samples. During several raft trips through the Grand Canyon, many samples of these Brahma amphibolites were collected from various outcrops in the inner gorge. These included seven samples from a single amphibolite body, so one mass, and they just broke it up into seven pieces. All the samples were sent to two well-respected commercial laboratories for radioisotope dating or testing. Both laboratories used standard best practice procedures on state-of-the-art equipment and routinely provide accurate and repeatable measurements of the required isotopes. You're measuring how much of the isotope it, it is remaining in, in this sample. Right. It's important to realize that the laboratories do not measure the age of the rocks but the isotopes in them at the present time. Geologists calculate an age using the measured amount of a daughter isotope, example argon, and its corresponding parent isotope for example, potassium. However, before this calculation can be made, it's necessary to assume how much of the daughter and parent were present when the rock formed. Right? This is an assumption. It's also necessary to assume that no isotopes were gained or lost over time and that the rate of radioactive decay has remained constant at a very uh, at the very slow rate measured today. Now we've talked about this in the past. We did a show called "How Dating Methods Work," and so you, yes. you know you might want to look that uh, that uh, episode up just to understand what we're talking about here with these assumptions. That's a good idea. Because um, I just want to be able to continue. But if you don't really understand that, check out that that, um, that How episode. How dating methods work. Exactly. Yes. 
The problem is, is that we don't know whether these assumptions are reasonable because they are not provable. And it's especially awkward for metamorphic rocks. Geologists overcome this problem by interpreting the result. For example, the calculated age could be taken as the date of metamorphism, or it could be the age of the original volcanic or sedimentary rock, or something in between, or something else. It could be whatever you want it okay, to, I guess, then. depending on what you, <laughs> what you need. Different methods don't agree. The calculated ages for all the individual samples from the same geologic formation using the same dating method turned out to be vastly different. Well, that's not even, they're saying even the same dating method with multiple samples aren't working here. Calculating the ages, even for those closely spaced samples from the same outcrop of the same lava flow. The results are not even close to each other, although the samples should all have given the same age. Well, of course they should. That, go, going back to the analogy with the rulers that we mentioned right. earlier. If, if, if we have the same ruler and we measure the distance of this magazine when it's open from one corner to another, and then, you, and you, then we take it away and we bring it back and we get a completely different measure, I mean, we take it away and bring it back, measure it again. But the same ruler, not the a different ruler. ruler. Same rock, in this case, it's the same samples that they're testing multiple times and they get different ages every right. single time. Furthermore, the ages calculated for these Grand Canyon rocks using three different isochron methods also disagreed greatly with each other. So now you're using the different rulers yes. and they're not agreeing. Um, uh, even when the error margins are taken into account, the three different dating methods give completely different ages that cannot be explained away. Indeed, none of the isochron ages corresponds to the date for any theorized geological event. Neither the original lava eruptions nor the subsequent metamorphism. Clearly, the calculated ages are useless for dating any events. I mean, it's just like your, your ruling yes. analogy. Finally, you get to the point where you just say, well, you know what, these rulers aren't working. <laughs> Let's just face it, it's not working. The, the, the difficulty for the evolutionist is that there are so few dating methods which give the millions and billions of years, they have to go with things like radioisotope dating, right. even though, as Dr. Snelling's pointing out here, it's an absolute failure. Right. In this particular example, but, it just isn't working but at But at all. least it gives you estimates of millions of years, which is what evolution requires, so you gotta go with them even if they're you know, discordant, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Now, he points out that this is the rule, not the exception, because maybe some people might be saying, yeah, well, that's just one isolated special case, example. special yeah. case, special pleading. Some might want to dismiss this conflicting dating results as an isolated abnormality. They might claim that they are due to this, uh, the uncertain effects of metamorphism and later uh, alterating, uh, alteration, especially erosion and weathering. But these are not isolated results. These are, uh, they are further conf confirmation of the repeated failure of all radioisotope dating methods uh, to successfully date Grand Canyon rocks. It's not just creationists who are discovering these dating failures. Other geologists are also reporting that different methods uh, on the same, let me just flip over here, rock unit give conflicting radioisotope dates. But in their reports, these geologists include tenuous interpretations to try to explain away the abnormal amounts of daughter isotopes. Mm. It seems they are trying to avoid the inescapable conclusion that the radioisotope methods simply do not yield reliable age, uh, ages. So the conclusion is the radioisotope methods long touted as irrefutable dating, uh, dating the Earth as countless millions of years old have repeatedly failed to give reliable and meaningful absolute dates for Grand Canyon rocks. That's the, the conclusion of the article. That's so, amazing. And yet so many Christians are convinced that the Earth must be millions of years because old. Because the scientists have these methods and, and, and they just seem so, yeah, so it's reliable. Like, it's like math. You know, two plus two equals four. You can't go against that, right? Because it, it's absolutely solid, and yet, in this real-world example, it's not solid at all. The Bible ends up being true again, right?